This code is from our previous video tutorial. We are importing some SDK here and creating an instance by passing app ID and app secret to the constructor method, which is some SDK. And we are writing a method which is asynchronous in nature and we output some message. It has nothing to do with our SDK yet. So let me show you the output once. So it prints whatever is present inside console log. Now let me remove this console log and let's try to interact with the SDK. So I'll take a constant. Let me name it app info because we will be trying to retrieve app information. I'll write a keyword called await since this is an asynchronous method. So the child process waits for the result to be returned here, okay? So I'll use our instance that is SDK dot a method name called ping. So there are many other methods like get curated assets, payload, ping, storage. So in that I'll select ping. So let me remove this and show it once again. Your Visual Studio Code Editor nicely lists all the methods and properties here. In that I'll select ping, which returns a promise. So we are taking a synchronous method here because we will wait for it to return some result because since it's an external server, it might take a brief moment to connect to some platform and get a response. So once there is some response, we will output whatever is returned, which is which will be stored inside constant app info. So let us run this and check the output. Now, do you remember this name, my super app somewhere? This is application detail, by the way, all these things. So quota has not been set here. So we are interested in this JSON output and particularly the name of our application. Let me show that to you. Let us open some platform developer dashboard we, we created in our first video tutorial and here we have the name. So let me change the name from my super app to, I'll write my super duper app. So hit that update application and wait for the confirmation like this, okay? Now the, now the app name is updated. I'll get back to the script and run the node once again. Now look at this, my super duper app. Previously it was my super app. So similarly, we can even update the webhook URL here. I'll simply write my blocks URL here, hit the update button here. Make sure to see this confirmation. Hit this update button and wait till you see this confirmation. Now run your node application once again. And as you can see, webhook URL has been updated. Now let me clear the output on this terminal and I'll show you how to traverse this JSON object and fetch the information which we are interested in. In this case, let us fetch the name of our application which is my super duper app, which is present here. So the entire output which you can see on our terminal is present inside constant app info. To get to the name, first we type dot the key name which is application. Inside that we have this name. So again, we need to use dot the key name which is name. So if you run this, it will fetch you the name of your application which is my super duper app. Let me show that to you. So here you have the output which is name of your application. So one last thing, always remember to log into your some platform developer account and check these sections that is payload and logs. We have not run any payloads here so this section will be empty for now but there will be some logs because we have already used methods like ping. Let's click this and look at the information here. The API endpoints, the user agent, and the output type which is JSON format and we are using some SDK and its version and we are using on the desktop and the response header which is 200 which means 
it ran successfully. You can see all the log information. If you run into any errors, this is the first place you need to look at after, of course, your terminal message, okay? So that's it. Since we have already established a connection to some platform using some SDK, it's time to actually send some signed requests and we will look at sending payloads in our next video tutorial.